What motivated you to take this big venture of building this longliner? You were fishing. You left fishing. You must have had some inspiration to get back into it. What led you to this venture? Well, I, I, I think I've told, I mean, lots of people who are very really taught, especially, you know, the uh, fishery department, them people that were out around, you know, asking questions one or the other any time I was talking to them. That job at time needed about 10 or 12 of them boats in order to bring back, well, uh, the pride of fishing. They want, I mean, to die in. I guess we got nine tired of fishing, of course, there's a little trap boat as you can see out there now. But I mean, it's useless thing of that, going to function a boat like that. But if you had a boat like that, where you can go to function and need me, of course, you can go to Labrador and fish. You and I think it can, you know, pay off. So I thought if I got one, and it worked, and if the government would come across again, if they don't take her from me when she's finished, I'd uh, try another one or two. How long had you been planning this, Jim? Well, I've been trying to get a boat for the last two, three years. What do you mean trying? Isn't it just a matter of making application and getting a permit to build? Oh, yes, when it comes to building a boat, I imagine. Yeah. But I, if there's ever a boat built around here, not this type, oh, it was, what, the last, or that size, I should say, but the last, what, 15, 20 years. And as you know, of course, there's no timber on this island, yeah. any more than the west of Pirate, well, that's almost out of the way altogether. Mm. So I had to charter a boat, take me up and Dildo Run, up on Twart Island, with five men and spend uh, you know, 10, 12 days up there, cut the timbers, and bring it home, and take the axe, get the men to help me to chop it and size it out 20 yards. It was a big undertaking. You, you took the men and went right into the forest mm -hmm. and cut all the material to frame this boat. To frame, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that is why I wanted the government to loan me money, the fisheries, uh, to buy a second-hand boat. Got on to where we were situated here on this island, timber scarce. Everything got to be brought in. Yeah. And I thought it was, uh, you know, better if they could get me a good second-hand boat. But of course, they just laughed at me. And the, they la who la they la You asked for a loan to get a second-hand boat. That's right. You had a boat in view that you wanted. Oh yes, yes. And what Two. what were you told? You told them you wanted to go fishing. The hard part about it was I had no money, and I told them I had no money. And when they saw that I had no money, well, it's not how they do. Uh, if you had the money, would you have gone for a loan? If I had the money, I wouldn't want to go to them. I could spend my own money. Did you say so? I told them that. Anyway. What did they tell you? Oh, well, still nothing they could do. Oh, so after I got home with the timbers, I phoned the no Mr. Randall yeah. and asked about the permit and the lines. And he said, I'll see what I can do now. And get it out to you as soon as it has passed, in other words. It was only a matter of a few days and I got the material to, to pass the lines rather than to pass the, the, the permit to build. Oh, did you lose much time in, in, uh, in getting the permit? No. Not after? No, no. That right timber. Lost none at all. It couldn't be done any quicker. Mm -hmm. But you had to convince someone that's right. That you were interested. Yeah. And uh, furthermore, now I got men working here, four or five men that I owe them probably seven or eight or thousand dollars each. I haven't got any money to give them. Well, uh, so they just were good enough to come along and work with me until such times as I get the money, which mightn't be before probably Christmas. Well, they're without their money all that time, and this winter they even give up their unemployment, come to go to work with me. And I had no money to give them. Although I've got two payments now, a bounty payments of something over $700 each. That is the bounty from the provincial, provincial government. government. Mm -hmm. The money you're referring to, you're going to get, would be subsidy from the federal government? Yes, or the loan. Or if, the I had loan. The, if I had the loan, if they could grant me the loan now, it would tell me they can't because they say that the whole is my responsibility. Well, well, no, I mean, that hole is going to cost probably five or six thousand dollars, or maybe more. And uh, the bounties is going to be roughly around thirty-eight hundred, say. Oh, yes. Well, now, i got to get the loan to the rest. If they says no, 
It's not going to loan you any money for whole construction. Well, I got to turn around and give the boat to the mainnet builder and go and sell her by and collect your money. If you hadn't had good friends and friends that were carpenters... That's right. You wouldn't have had your boat? No, I wouldn't have. Uh, you mean to say you could not you could not get a loan to do this? No. You could not from the authorities. You had to get a loan from your friends. That's right. A loan in free labor. In labor, right. Until I until such time as the boat is completed and I get the federal subsidy and the bounties put together, plus the loan. Although the loan is not for building the boat, it's only for equipment. But I got to try to offset it somehow. But how, I mean, I don't know. Because they firmly told me that there was no money loaned for hull construction. $3,800 must build that boat. This was told you by the... Fisher's Loan Board. Fisher's Loan Board. I got a letter over there now. You have a letter. Hmm? Do you know any other fishermen around here who would like a boat and cannot get one because... They do not have the finance? Or well, uh, there's several fellows around that seems interested in the boats. Well, they haven't got the money, of course. Yeah. And, uh, they, uh, if they had the money, the money was more easily available. I think we'd have more boats, yes. Uh, you're having an engine in there. You're having radar? Well, I haven't got a loan approved for radar yet. That's another problem coming up. You have depth recorder. And ship to shore. Ship to shore. And Gertie. And Gertie. What will the, the whole outlay cost? I'd imagine the boat with minus radar, when it's complete, it'll cost anywhere from 30 to $35,000. For $35,000. Jim, well, you must have great future in the fisheries of Fogo Island to uh, take the responsibility of $35,000. Well, I, I, yes, I still think it can be made if uh, things were done like the way I'd like to see them done. Because now you'll go probably 20 or 30 or perhaps even 40 on that size boat with four men, gill nets, and uh, you'll haul your nets in, of course. And you've got turbot, flounder, or several species of fish. All you've got to do is just, well, somebody's going to swear on and wonder what's that in the way for you got to pick up that old cod, about the cheapest fish you got them out, and save that one. You got to throw the rest away. Like I say, swear on because they're in the net. But if we had some way of getting, could sell this fish, you know, I think it would be 100% better. But, oh, more than offset the cost. There's nowhere in this immediate area you can sell no. turbot no, no, or no. flounder? Not only a cod. Can't sell catfish or wolf fish? No. But last year now, we they did sell it because uh, Fisher Products 28 had a collector on here. Well, she bought uh, flounder and turbot and catfish and so on. But this year now, they haven't got a collector on. And of course, you just got to throw it away. You, you, indications are you'll be throwing away how much, I wonder, if you daily catch. Well, uh, according to last fall, uh, you'd throw away about 50% uh, of the, your income if you could dissolve sellable. Uh, doesn't that uh, put us back to a fish fish conference we had here in March where the fishermen had hoped to organize? That's right. And their own mm -hmm. cooperative producer mm -hmm. society and set up their own marketing? That's right. Nothing has happened yet? Nothing, no. No, not a thing. Not that I know of, you know. I, no, uh, well... I did sit in on that conference, Ari, but I haven't, I haven't heard anything since. Well, it must be a, a great satisfaction to you to be able to help Jim, who yes. needed help at this time. Well, uh, in some way, we agreed in this, you know, on that uh, problem from the beginning, when this man began to, to think about the work, uh, he thought that I might uh, be of some valuable person in the work because of having some experience in the work before. And uh, 
I did, told him did, that I'd give him all the help that I could. Did you ever build anything this size before? Or? Yeah. You have? Yeah. Yeah. More one or two or more? Oh, just about all my lifetime. This kind of a job. Not exactly building, but rebuilding and remodeling. And that was some so of you the knew worst. them inside out? Yeah. That's some of the first work that I did do in the boat work. How big do you think you could make them here? Now, this is the biggest boat that I worked on. Could you make bigger ones here? Yes, of course. To any advantage? Of course, we could have bigger boats for this purpose, and uh, it would be a, a wonderful advantage. In more ways than one, be able to go much farther at field, and uh, we'd probably uh, be able to cover a larger area of the fishing ground. And, uh, in some cases, you would find a, a good patch of fish. And uh, we've already had some experience in uh, uh, fish finding apparatus and have uh, found quite a lot of fish in different places worthwhile. In fact, we had uh, been in company with some of the dragers out here, so a stew in particular. And we uh, located quite a patch of fish. Do you think the fish are disappearing? Uh, somewhat disappear because of the temperature of water and the uh, season and bait moving from the land and so on. For that reason, fish naturally will move with the bait and the temperature of water according to. Oh, but I mean, uh, do, you, do you think there, uh, there are less fish here than there used to be? Oh, no, I don't think that. You don't? No, I don't think that. Some people say very much there are less fish here. I don't think. No. I don't think. I don't see no reason for it. It's just a matter of getting at them. You're right. They, they, find, they find their own uh, uh, feeding ground somewhat. And uh, Fogo Island is a place that uh, fish have always been caught. Some, some years in uh, greater number than others, but... Uh, uh, fish to be scarce or less than there was, no, not in my opinion. Are there indications on Fogoan that young fishermen or fishermen are willing to change over to this new type of fishing? Oh, yes, definitely, yes. Why? Well, I think it's a better way, you know, fishing because the fish don't come in shore now like it did a few years ago. And you got to go off for the fish, and if there was no fish, which have happened, of course, fish failures of this island, we could always move up to Labrador and get a fair catch of fish in one of them boats. And the last two or three years when shore fishermen with cod traps have been doing poorly, have men with these new methods been making a good livelihood? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to witness the launching of this boat built by Jim Decker here. And uh, I guess everyone feels pretty excited, and I know I do. And pretty nervous too, being the first occasion that I've had to do a job like this. Probably somebody should crack a bottle of champagne over my head so I could disappear right away. <laughs> but it, uh, this launching in Joe Bet's arm is, uh, means something to me, actually, because uh, a long time ago, a little over 25 years, I built a boat, believe it or not, and I launched her myself in the middle of the night in Change Islands, and uh, I left at daylight with uh, four muzzle-loading shotguns aboard, a keg of powder, and four bags of shot, and my first port of call was Joba's arm. Anyway, the tide is rising, and we must get on with the job. And I take great pleasure in introducing to you our honorable member, Mr. Eric Jones. So what I'm going to say is going to be brief and to the point. I think that uh, 
these men here, Jim and his crew here, have proved that it's still possible to do something on Fogo Island. Uh, the Decker family have got a long history of boat building that goes back longer than I can remember. And uh, uh, Jim and these men here have proved that they, it can be done again. This boat has been built here practically all of local timber, cut, as Jim says, in Notre Dame Bay. And those of you that might be here visiting from the mainland, I'd like for you to just look around this plant that he's had here to work with. He's got no very little modern equipment and machinery to do the work with. It's, it's, a, it's a, a craftsman-like job done with the ingenuity and the ability and the craftsmanship of these local people. Uh, now, I don't know what the name of this boat is going to be. I know, but I can't disclose it. I've got to leave that to my wife. But I would say that if I was going to name this boat, I would call her I'm Trying. <laughs> because Jim Decker is really trying to do something here on Fogo Island for himself. And I would like to see not only one boat go down this slipway, I'd like to see two or three. And probably in the next five or six years, if we had 10 or 12 boats like this, probably a bit bigger, probably some not so big, uh, it would make a vast difference on this island. There's no doubt in anybody's mind today, ladies and gentlemen, I think you will agree with me, if we've got to get fish, we've got to go farther afield. And if we're going to remain and stay and live on Fogo Island, we got fish. So I'd like to say to a lot of the young people that are here today, let's get our back to the wheel, let's, let's, let's quit qu crying in our bear and using each other as a weeping wall. Let's get our, our shoulder to the wheel and see if more of us can't do the same thing as uh, Jim De Decker has done. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. That's all I have to say. And now I'm going to ask my wife, on behalf of Mr. Decker, if she would be good enough to name this boat, and then we'll all give her a rousing three cheers as she goes down the slipway. I name this boat Atlantic Queen II. May God bless her and all who sail in her. Carry on. Who's going to break? Well, how much time do you want? Hold on, he'll be back. 